Uh, welcome. Uh, welcome to this year's uh, launch of uh, the Midwest Big Data Hub uh, Student Data Science Group Webinar Series. Um, this is our, our first of this year. We're very excited. We've actually um, uh, got a, a number of new groups scheduled up, uh, so very exciting. And of course, we'll also post afterward uh, the link to tonight's uh, Zoom call and the presentation. Um, I'd like to, as uh, I will introduce the, the speakers for tonight in just a moment. I just want to mention that we will uh, indeed be having a webinar next month as well. Uh, and uh, that will be Elizabeth McDaniel from uh, UW Madison uh, will, will join us to talk about the COMBI organization, uh, which is Computational Biology, Ecology, and Evolution, uh, and the work they're doing uh, related to data science with that organization. Uh, so for tonight, I would like to introduce, we're very pleased to have our kickoff this year uh, with folks right here at the University of Illinois in Champaign, uh, Ian Huntley and Shivam Kumar uh, from the Analytics in Business Club uh, from our business school uh, on the Urbana-Champaign campus. So welcome, gentlemen, and uh, I'll turn it over to you. Great. Well, thank you. Uh, a little bit of background about us before we jump in. Uh, my name is Ian, and uh, I'm a second year MBA student. And uh, currently, I'm the vice president of the organization, Analytics and Business. We're an MBA group. Um, we have other groups, such as marketing groups, uh, real estate groups. We're the analytics group for our MBA. But we try to open that up, and we try to get others involved. And a little bit about me is... Um, I'm getting my MBA this summer. I was with Discover Financial Services, working in their marketing department. I'm a big marketing guy. And uh, I'm also working on a startup right now. I'm the vice president of marketing, and so that's taking up a lot of my time. Um, and then I'm doing some side consulting as well. So I'm happy to be here, and uh, thanks for the introduction. I'll pass it over to Shivam. Thanks, Ian. Uh, I'm Shivam. Uh, I'm also a second year MBA student. Uh, my background has been in analytics. I was at uh, Mu Sigma for around five years back in India uh, before I came down for my MBA program. Over the summer, I was at Georgia Pacific in the marketing analytics and pricing function. And I've also been involved on and off with uh, companies like Datakind, where we volunteered our analytics skills for NGOs. Uh, so yeah, very excited to be here and excited to talk to you about analytics and business. Awesome. So bear with us for one second. We'll get this switched over and share our screen for a presentation. Can you all see our screen? Yep, we can. Awesome. All good. Perfect. We'll get started then. Uh, We'll just quickly go over the agenda and we, what we want to talk about today. Uh, we'll start out with some background about analytics and business, our mission and sort of the government structure. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about what Ian and I have done over the past one year to build the organization, uh, the kind of events we've thought of, uh, the marketing initiatives, uh, and then talk a little bit about our priorities for the future uh, and what we plan in the next one year. Uh, towards the end, we'll cover some of the lessons learned over the past year and then open up for uh, discussions and questions. Uh, so uh, I think considering the uh, organizations that we've seen in this webinar series before, I think there was slightly more uh, uh, non-business focused, more core analytics technical focused. I think they're slightly different in that we are very heavily business focused. And we're trying to bridge the gap between data science and help business leaders really get into the, onto the data science side of things. Uh, as a result of that, our objectives revolve more around, you know, helping our students learn how to build a culture of data driven decision making in the organizations that they go to, uh, how to drive data analysis uh, towards, uh, you know, insights that can really help org organizations achieve their objectives. And also to develop analytic strategies, to develop project pipelines, to mentor analysts, uh, and of course, to think about data visualizations and data storytelling. So uh, all of these are core uh, sort of objectives that we try to cover. Uh, our mission really uh, is to demystify uh, analytics. Uh, so for some context, as an MBA class, we have students from a wide variety of backgrounds. So we have veterans, we have people uh, with a background in education, with a background in medicine uh, or law, you know. Uh, so, the, so there's a inherent, sometimes some sort of a mental block around coding or 
some of the more technical sides of uh, statistics. So really our objective is to get rid of that mental block, to demystify analytics, uh, so that all students are comfortable with uh, working on analytics, working in the analytics space and working hands-on. Uh, so we engage a lot with professionals in the business analytics roles, uh, helping our students understand how these professionals got to the roles that they are in. Uh, we try and keep our students abreast of the latest industry developments, the latest news, uh, and also try and provide hands-on experience uh, with the latest tools, latest platforms, or latest uh, technologies that are being used. Uh, our organization is relatively new. Uh, we were established uh, only around two years ago in 2016 as a data analytics club, uh, which then morphed into the current analytics and business in the last one year. Uh, in the last uh, one or one and a half years, we've held a wide range of events ranging from uh, uh, analytics case competitions that we participated in, uh, multiple hands-on workshops, lunch and learns, uh, and a lot of peer-led study sessions. Uh, over the next one year, uh, we are hoping to expand on a lot of these events and also add events like launching our own newsletter, possibly hosting our own case competition, and a lot more uh, hands-on related projects is something we would like to work on. Uh, just uh, some background into how the organization functions itself. Uh, so, of course, as you know, I'm Shivam, the president of the club, and Ian is the vice president. Uh, we also have some supporting teams that we have established, uh, uh, which we call the marketing teams. Uh, so for newsletter and general branding, we have some folks, uh, students from MBA and non-MBA helping us out. And also we run a host of social media pages across LinkedIn and Facebook. Uh, and we have students helping us out with that as well. Uh, the president and vice president are elected at the start of each uh, year. Uh, there are no restrictions to the membership. Anyone can join. Uh, we are funded by an umbrella organization here. It's called the MBA Association. Uh, and that's really where all of our uh, funds, all of our uh, space for events and everything comes from. Uh, as I said, our uh, leadership sort of changes hands once a year. Uh, so to maintain some form of continuity, we also have invited our former leaders to join us in advisory roles. And those are listed here as well. Uh, as I said, being a relatively newer organization, only two, two and a half years old, there are a whole host of challenges that we face, uh, not only to grow very fast, but other than that as well. Uh, and some of these are listed here. So being in Champaign, we are geographically separated from the industry that is present in Chicago and, and the surrounding areas. Uh, so that geographical challenge is something that we're trying to overcome. Uh, also, we are a smaller cohort. Our MBA program is around 50 members, uh, uh, and it is very intentionally maintained that way to give a more personalized experience. Uh, but what that also means is that we have a slightly smaller turn up in a lot of events that we have. Uh, uh, and that's a challenge that we're trying to overcome. Uh, of course, the yearly change of leadership, uh, we're trying to maintain continuity despite that change. And there is limited external funding right now. Again, uh, being a newer organization, we do not have external sponsorships or alumni bases that are set up right now. And as a result, our external funding is limited. Uh, keeping these challenges in mind, uh, Ian and I sort of, when we started off at the start of this year, at the start uh, earlier this year, we created a roadmap of things that we wanted to do over the course of the year. And these are some of the highlights of what we wanted to cover. Uh, so we identified that there's already a very strong, thriving, uh, analytics ecosystem that exists at the University of Illinois. Uh, and we really uh, invested heavily into tapping into that ecosystem. Uh, secondly, we focus a lot on peer-led learning initiatives. Uh, again, that not only enhance the leadership skills of our students, but also help them get some hands-on experience. Uh, we, to overcome the geographical sort of challenges I spoke of, we hosted a range of virtual events and webinars and, and focus a lot more on that as opposed to uh, physical workshops here on campus. Uh, there are also marketing campaign, a marketing initiative that we launched uh, that helped us expand our, uh, our student base and help us get more members enrolled into our organization outside the MBA program itself. And of course, uh, just some basics in terms of maintaining alumni databases, uh, just uh, outreach program towards alumni and maintaining good relations with them, something that we think will help play a good long-term platform for our organization. 
to delve slightly deeper into some of these events uh, that we've done over the last one year, we'll start with how we leverage the campus and its resources. Uh, so there's uh, a research park that exists on campus that hosts the innovation centers or digital labs for multiple corporates. These can range from Capital One, Brunswick, Granger, Caterpillar, and a whole host of others. So we really invested a fair amount of time into understanding how we can tap into this and we built some corporate relationships here uh, to try and see uh, what kind of workshops or what kind of events can be conducted along with these organizations. Uh, there's also a data science user group. Uh, that's a meetup that takes place monthly on campus uh, along with these corporates and their interns. And we took regular treks to these uh, monthly meetups. So this gave us access to a lot of uh, you know, the ongoing events on campus. Uh, we also try to make connections with other RSOs and other uh, organizations that exist around analytics and uh, other than that as well. So one of those is Entrecore. Uh, Entrecore is a consulting organization that helps startups uh, work on their projects. Uh, and we very recently conducted a very exhaustive onboarding, uh, analytics onboarding session for their consultants. So this has given us access into not only their projects, but a lot of corporates that they are dealing with as well. So that's been a great resource for us. Uh, moving forward, I'll let Ian talk a little bit more about some of the other events that uh, we've been working towards. Yeah, thanks. So <clears throat> as Shabon mentioned, we've been investing a lot in peer support and hands-on experience. Uh, one of the main components of the Illinois MBA is a focus on hands-on learning, experiential learning. And we wanted to bring that into fruition uh, with our organization. Uh, we know that people will learn best when they can actually apply the skills that they learn. We, at our, in our curriculum, we have a data and analytics class. However, it's one thing to sit in a class, take the tests, and, and move on from that. So what we're trying to do is provide a platform where we can take it one step further. And we do this through, uh, through different workshops that we have with some of the professors and other um, industry professionals in the area. Um, and then <clears throat> we also do group Kaggle projects. So what we do is uh, we implemented this this year. We learned a lot and we hope to continue this in the future. But we know that there are a lot of platforms out there. Uh, it's of, of crowdsourced code and crowdsourced information. One of those being Kaggle, there are some others. And we wanted to bring students together to, to choose a real world issue find real world data and start using the tools at our disposal to, to do real business cases with that. So you'll see in, in the image on the right, we had a small group this year uh, where we, we looked at some data, we applied it, um, I believe it was around uh, American Airlines and a couple, of other, uh, a couple of other companies and the problems that they faced. And we've gotten really good feedback on this because students are able to kind of take their learning and put it into action. Additionally, uh, some of the programming that we've been trying to ramp up this year, and we hope it continues forward, are workshops, webinars, and networking. Um, specifically, uh, what we mean by this is we've been tapping into a lot of alumni in our network, and we've asked them to come back and talk with us. And this has taken a variety of forms. Apologies, I had, thought that I had that muted. Um, so this takes a, a variety of forms. A lot of times we have lunch and learns, um, where we bring in, you know, these alumni and they'll talk with us while we, you know, we have lunch. And, um, and then we also try to tap into uh, maybe not alumni, but also industry professionals in the research part that Siobhan had mentioned before. So the Brunswick Corporation, they have an innovation lab over at the research park. And what's really nice about that is that we're able to tap into their corporate analytics leaders. Um, and, you know, after talking with them, they're always uh, very eager to come and talk with us so that we, uh, they can help us kind of foster uh, that yearning for more analytics information. Additionally, we started uh, getting involved in case competitions. This was something that hadn't been done in the past. So in the spring of 2018, we looked at the Iowa Analytics Case Competition. At the Geese College of Business at Illinois, there's a big push for case competitions. It's a great opportunity for students to get real world experience of you know, presenting in front of executives, uh, really you know, in crunch time. You know, some of these case competitions are only 24 hours. How do you solve real world problems in that amount of time? 
So we identified the Iowa Analytics case competition. We created a cross-functional team. We had two people who were in the MBA program, um, and then we had several others who were in other programs, uh, other grad programs as well. And these were math programs um, and then other technology management programs as well. So it was really great for our team to kind of work cross-functionally uh, to solve real-world cases in this competition. What's really great about this is that it offers the opportunity for these students to get case coaching sessions. Uh, we have a great team here of, of a recent alum, as well as MBAs who are in their second year, a little bit more experienced, to work with first years uh, and maybe some of these other programs that aren't so familiar with case competitions to do that coaching. Uh, we would di also do live cases uh, just for practice leading up to the Iowa case competition, and it's a great networking opportunity. Looking in the future, we definitely want to continue with the Iowa case competition. Uh, we're looking at other areas of opportunity where we can do case competitions in analytics and related uh, areas. One thing that uh, probably I'm more excited about than Shabam, because I'm a marketing and advertising guy. <laughs> uh, when Shabam and I kind of took the reins, we really looked at the brand that analytics and business was at the time. And actually, if you look at the top right corner, uh, you see our logo. This is actually a, a new logo that we implemented for the organization. We wanted something fresher and not as outdated. And so that was kind of our first initiative, is rebrand this organization to be more inviting um, and to be more modern. After that, we created an extensive marketing plan um, to really guide kind of the high-level strategy. And those objectives for this plan were really around recruiting. So number one, recruiting students, not only in the MBA, but in uh, these cross-functional areas, other grad areas, uh, such as uh, you know, MSTM, Masters of Science and Technology Management, and some others, uh, but then also recruiting professionals and alumni to be advisors and, and you know, be willing to come and talk with us for these lunch and learns and that sort of thing. Um, from that, we created uh, strategic directions and uh, strategic audiences who we wanted to reach. So we were looking at other grad programs, um, other data programs around campus. So we were reaching out to undergrad groups uh, and then also you know, the Midwest Data Hub. We really wanted to put our feelers out there to see what opportunities were out there for more engagement. Um, and then lastly, obviously, uh, as I mentioned, alumni and professionals in analytics roles. We wanted to reach out to them and create that relationship. Now, how does that come to life? Uh, over on the far right-hand side, we have taxable executions. So um, some marketing initiatives that we could do, very grassroots, ground level. We don't have a huge budget. Uh, <laughs> we talked about doing elevator pitches in class, so asking professors if we could take five minutes of time before class starts to talk to people about the organization. We started an email marketing platform and we're getting that up and running. Uh, some other ideas that we thought about were posters on digital boards throughout campus, uh, really getting into social media. Uh, that's in the very early stages right now, so we hope that that continues on in the future. Um, and then lastly, really putting more emphasis on these lunch and learns, um, and then the idea of mix and mingles. So lunch and learns for lunch, but then mix and mingles, these could be like hors d'oeuvres in the late afternoon, you know, when some of these business professionals get off work and they have more time. Uh, to come and talk with us. So looking into our priorities, uh, moving ahead, uh, we're trying to really lay the groundwork uh, for the next incoming leaders of this organization. So again, our priorities are increasing involvement uh, amongst various audiences to increase the education level and to increase networking opportunities. Um, additionally, we want to grow the you know, uh, sorry, we want to grow the multidisciplinary collaboration with UI. You see departments and organizations. Again, like I mentioned before, we've been trying to do a lot of networking and reaching out to see where opportunities lie uh, for collaboration, uh, for networking, for programming, that sort of thing. Um, and over on the right hand side, you can kind of see that, you know, I mentioned Mesa Minkles earlier. If we could do some of those in Chicago, that would be great because we know a lot of professionals are there. Uh, we've also liked to explore this, uh, maybe a trip out to Silicon Valley and meet with some alumni out there. Um, and then lastly, we really want to put more focus on those live cases, those uh, real, world, real world experiences where people can kind of deepen their learning. And that's done through these industry projects, but then also peer-led study sessions. So uh, as we kind of start wrapping this presentation up, we wanted to share with you some lessons learned. Uh, coming into this, you know, like Shabam said, this is a very new organization, only a couple years old. So some of this stuff, you know, like marketing, we, we had to kind of establish that, and we know that it will be carried on uh, 
in the future. But we learned some lessons, and uh, one of those was that we we could have benefited from maintaining consistent contact with our audiences and professionals better. Uh, that's something we definitely want to improve on in the future because if we can keep in constant contact with these people, it'll increase engagement, it'll increase excitement with analytics and how it pertains to business. Uh, second, a lesson learned was that time management and delegating tasks is crucial. Um, Shabam and I are leaders of the organization, but we found a lot of value in creating a marketing team and helping kind of offload some of the work there which has been really helpful, but um, you know, that in and of itself brings its issues, uh, you know, keeping people on task and that sort of thing. So uh, one lesson learned is that we need to better manage not only our time, but maybe teams that we work with. And another lesson learned is uh, it'd be really helpful if we created a calendar of events and that would just help us kind of uh, work backwards, figuring out, okay, well, when do we want to have an event and when should we do marketing and when should we talk to the appropriate people to uh, reserve rooms and the right equipment and that sort of thing. And so maybe having a calendar of events would really help us out in terms of our marketing efforts moving forward. Now, again, we're, we're very new. Uh, we know that a lot of people watching this webinar are more experienced than us. You know, their organization is probably, probably has years of, uh, years of experience, uh, maybe some marketing plans already developed, some other programming initiatives established. So we appreciate your help. Uh, I know that we're moving into kind of a QA and a discussion, but we would love to hear from you. Some questions that we had were, how have you strengthened your professional involvement and corporate sponsorship with your group? Um, also, which types of events have been more successful in driving career outcomes? And lastly, which programming or marketing initiatives have really worked well for you, or maybe haven't worked so well? Um, we would love to just hear your thoughts, and uh, that would be really appreciated because that would help our organization grow stronger as we move forward. So with that, we want to say thank you. Again, we really appreciate the opportunity to join in the webinar and talk with everybody. Um, and so now we'll open it up to questions and uh, questions and answers. And we'll stop sharing our screen and go back to our webcam. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very interesting. Um, as you all noted, uh, as you both noted, it, it is a little, it's different. The, the orientation of what you all do in terms of business analytics is uh, a little bit different than some of the uh, uh, other data science groups that we've in, interacted with so far and had. And I think you, it's, a, it's, it's kind of terrific. Um, the perspective that you bring is to me, very interesting. It engages a different um, aspect or broadens the aspects in terms of industry engagement that you might be able to, uh, to do because um, it's not just about, for example, machine learning, right? So, so very interesting and important. Um, I do have a couple questions, but let me, before I ask them, let me see if any of the other, uh, any of the other participants or audience has any questions today. We're not that scary to talk to, we promise. <laughs> okay, uh, jump right in, Varsha. Oh, we can't hear you very, uh, you have to unmute yourself, please. Go ahead. Um, uh, hi, Shubham and Ian. how are you guys? Good, how are you? Thank you. I'm good. I have a question. Uh, I'm also a student in Geese, and I was interested in future, if do we have any opportunities where we are conducting small project, uh, you know, small project competition on big data where we could club our business analytics knowledge as well as our business acumen. And this small competition will uh, help us to uh, brush up our skills more and to interact with teams. So are there any opportunities coming? Are you working in that direction? Yeah, I can take that. Uh, okay. Yeah, uh, to answer that, we, we definitely intend to participate in the Iowa case competition again. That will be next semester and that will definitely involve, you know, some of the skills that you spoke about working on big data, working on combining business skills with the technical skills. Uh, so that might be one uh, competition you want to look out for. Uh, internally, mm -hmm. also we are working on, uh, as we said, we usually get into groups and sort of work on Kaggle projects and uh, uh, or just pick up, you know, problems that we see out there that our professors are working on. Uh, so that's something we're trying to organize ourselves into. And uh, you can go ahead and drop us a note. Uh, we'll see if we can fit you into a team. Uh, 
Uh, we probably will not start that in the next two months. Uh, we do have uh, the new leadership elections coming up uh, in December, uh, and then they'll take it on forward from there, uh, starting in the spring semester. But uh, if you drop us a note, we'll keep you in the loop. Uh, make sure to join our social media pages, and we have WhatsApp group as well. Uh, and that'll keep you up to date with all of the events that are coming up. But we definitely do have some of those events in the pipeline. You should keep an eye out for that. Yeah, and thank you. Yeah, and similarly to last year, uh, you know, it, it's really tough to organize some of this programming at the beginning of the year because people are still settling in their coursework and that sort of thing. So what we've found is that we get more engagement in the spring semester because workload is a little bit lighter and that sort of thing. And it, it aligns very nicely with the Iowa case competition. Yeah. Uh, when we when we did the real world uh, Kegel projects and that sort of thing, yeah. we got a lot more interest in that in the spring. So as Shabam said, please stay in touch with us and there's more to come. Thank you guys. Uh, it answers my question. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Great. Okay, so I do have a couple of questions. Uh, so um, uh, let me start with a comment and then I'll ask a question. So when you get your social media set up, we do track student organizations. Uh, we do track their Twitter feed and we will retweet. So if you're having an event or you've got a team going into a, you know, to a, some kind of competition or challenge, we're happy to, re, you know, retweet some of those things. Or if you're doing a training and you, you want some more exposure, we'll push that out. That's great. Happy to do that. So, so here's my couple of questions. Um, are there additional challenges besides the uh, business case challenge at Iowa that you are uh, looking at? Are there things sort of, you know, we see a lot of the straight data science hackathons, right? The straight, the straight hackathons happen. And then we have seen some really interesting challenges that are reverse chip pitch challenge where a company or an organization or a city says, hey, we have this problem. Help us, help us design a solution to this problem. And very often those solutions are, simple, are not simply a, a data science or an analytic solution. It does require a team of people to think about uh, the marketing and the, the proposition uh, and the, you know, the, the sort of organization of all of that and who needs to be there and a broader team. So, uh, so that's my first question. Are there other challenges that your group is looking for or would like to participate in? Or are you, you know, are you uh, expanding beyond, besides the Kaggle, um, are there others for you besides the, Iowa, the University of Iowa challenge? Yeah, um, I can speak and then Shivam if you have additional comments. Um, right now, yeah, I, one challenge that we face uh, kind of on top of that is engagement. We love the idea of approaching organizations. Uh, we had mentioned before Brunswick organization up here at the research park. And we do, uh, sorry, I say we because I, I've been doing a little bit of consulting work for them, but Brunswick is looking for, you know, help with data scientists. And in terms of that, but then also some programming that we have just naturally at the, at the School of Business, uh, we have act, what are called action learning projects where we have real world clients who bring their, their problems to us. We're trying to work with the, the organizers with, with that curriculum as well as working with site supervisors out at the research park to ask them if they have real world problems that they need help with. We wanna see what the opportunity is out there, what, where we could potentially dip our toes into the water. Um, and then from that, we want to kind of put feelers out and see you know, what kind of resources we can allocate to that. We wanna to put together teams to work on that, but we also need to know uh, kind of what people's involvement or uh, you know, if they would have the time to do that because it is one additional thing on top of coursework and that sort of thing. So we're trying to find a, a balance there. Yeah, I think also with case competitions, uh, because of our program is so focused on it, I think organically it's just very easy for us to get traction there, uh, reach out to schools there and find out about case competitions. And that's kind of the reason where we, why we have started with that. But yeah, we're definitely open to uh, doing kinds of projects or kind of kinds of hackathons or, uh, you know, events that we haven't done before. So uh, if you had something in mind uh, while you were mentioning that, we'd be very happy to explore that opportunity. Great. So thank you. I actually was going to ask about how you're engaging with the research park. So that was very helpful. So very good. And part of the reason I ask uh, about it is, in, in fact, uh, last year, the Midwest Big Data Hub partnered with Campus Research IT and the city of Champaign 
on a reverse challenge pitch from US Ignite. Uh, and it, that was very interesting. And it seemed to me um, there are opportunities in those sorts of challenges for um, teammates with your sorts of skills, right? So um, it, it, going forward, if there are larger uh, competitions that come across our uh, our bow here at, at MBDH, we'll, uh, we'll certainly try and link you into those. So that would be great. Oh yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. Any other questions from the audience? Okay, so I want to thank you again. I also will just mention uh, we're happy to connect you. There's a couple of student groups in particular at a couple other universities. Um, they're not in the business side of things, but they have a lot of experience with connecting with industry and, and lessons learned that they might share. We'd be happy if you just reach out to me or Alice, we'll be happy to connect you with those folks. Yeah, that, that'd be a great resource and a great way to just continue our learning. Uh, like we said, we really want this organization to grow and be more inclusive. We want it to be more hands-on. So anyone who we can connect with would be of great help. So thank you. Yeah. Happy to do that. Okay, well, I want to thank you again. Uh, barring any last-minute comments from the, from the audience there, looks like everybody's silent. So thank you again. This is a wonderful presentation. We really appreciate your time, and good luck with the rest of the semester. Thank you. All the best to everybody else, and uh, we look forward to further presentations in the Midwest Big Data Hub webinar. Thanks very much. Have a Thanks good night. Bye-bye.